let's start off with the idea of space-time. Space-time is a key to explaining how the universe works. Space-time is basically a mathematical model that combines all four dimensions. The first three dimensions are length, width, and height. And the last fourth dimension is time. Combined together creates this mathematical model here. And it's used as an uh, idea to uh, measure basically gravity and black holes. Uh, it can, the farther something bends down, the bigger the gravity, as you can see here, Earth, the space time here is bending down towards it, meaning it has that, it's a visualization of Earth's gravity. It's, uh, it can be looked at, looked at as fabric per se. Let's say that you have a blanket and you have a ball. You flat out the blanket and you hold it midair and you put the ball. The blanket sinks in between the ball and you can see, you know, that I, it's idea of gravity. And this is a you know visual model of the space-time continuum. So for ex okay, so to go off of space-time, the bigger the mass of something, the deeper the space-time bends, similar to the fabric. Like I said, this is the sun, this is the ne neutron star, and this is the black hole. As you can see, black hole possesses the greatest gravitational force in the universe, and space-time can ripple and bend. However, for it to be tearing. Uh, there's a difference of opinion from what the lectures I've seen. Some people have said that it can tear, but Einstein's theory says, no, it cannot tear. So yeah, there's, there's a difference of opinion in that matter. Uh, next. So space-time and time dilation. So Einstein's theory of special relativity touches upon the topic of time slowing down and bending. As something bends space-time, uh, sorry, uh, the faster you move uh, it's through space, which is the first three dimensions, length, width, and height, the faster you move through space, then the slower the fourth dimension becomes, time. So as something bends space-time, it bends time itself. And the deeper the bend, the slower the time. For example, let's look at this, okay? this Let's say that this object right here is a uh, a black hole per se. As, as uh, it you know brings the space-time down, the fabric of the space-time down, the closer you get towards that uh, the black hole, the center of the black hole, the slower time goes. So uh, an example of, uh, sorry, the closer something is to the source of the gravitational effects, the slower time goes. However, this is very, very re relative to an object. So this idea is like, you know, relative to another object. An example is if someone were to travel at the speed of light, they would age slower than on Earth because, um, again, like I said, let's say the speed of light were the object, the faster it would go down, the slower time would become. Another example right here is this picture. It's called the twin paradox. And basically this twin paradox touches upon the idea if there were two twins living on Earth and one left to go uh, long left at the speed of light for let's say uh, 70 years, then they would age much slower than people on Earth. As you can see, her twin is now an old man, but she's still practically about the same age range because she uh, slow because her you know her time was slower and his was faster than on Earth. Do you make sense? Does it make sense? Any questions before I move on? Keep going. Okay. So now I'm going to touch upon the idea of gravitational waves. So you would have to you know understand the idea of space time to understand gravitational waves. So. The idea of gravitational waves was first introduced by Einstein in 1916, but it was dismissed by him because he said that the idea of gravitational waves were very faint. It would not produce any, uh, uh, it would not bring anything to the scientific community. However, as time went on towards the 1960s and 70s, people started looking more into this and they realized that yes, it can bring some sort of difference. Uh, so like I was saying, um, it's used to, uh, an example of gravitational, uh, gravitational waves could be used to or, uh, observe the orbit and collision of two black holes, and it's worth a fraction of a second. So gravitational waves are basically when uh, to, uh, an object in, the, in space uh, creates ripples in space-time. Like I said before, it says that uh, uh, space-time can ripple or bend. The rippling causes gravitational waves. And this is used to, again, observe the collision of two black holes, which was one of its first um, what first you know brought it to the scientific community here in this video it's like a 35 second video it basically observes the the orbiting of the two black holes and it's not real it's a uh, artist depiction but it's the orbiting of the two black holes and the gravitational waves around it as you can see all of this around them is like the rippling of the gravitational waves and then you know as time goes on they soon merge into one 
And this, again, this couldn't really have been done without the idea of gravitational waves. The concept of gravitational waves helped scientists learn about how the black holes merge together. Um, where was I? Okay. And again, the signals of a gravitational wave is worth a fraction of a second. So, okay, so neuron stars and gravitational waves. Unlike black holes, neuron stars emit signals that last over a minute instead of a fraction of a second. It generates continuous gravitational waves. So that means that the gravitational wave that is being sent out goes at a continuous frequency. Uh, any bump or imperfection from this neuron star can send out a wave. And this was also observed in 2017. So what gravitational waves offer us? Gravitational waves offer us a new technology in the scientific community to observe celestial objects. Before the observation of these waves, scientists would only use the idea of light to study the universe. However, light doesn't work in all aspects of, again, studying the universe. For example, dark matter. So you may have heard of dark matter a couple of times before. Dark matter is an extremely mysterious and unknown concept in astrophysics. It is known to take up a huge majority of the universe and scientists know close to nothing about the substance. However, using the concept of gravity and how dark matter interacts with stars offers new information. So yeah, gravitational waves. So ripples in space time. Again, I wanted to show some visualization towards gravitational waves. As you can see over here, there's rippling and all of these ripples uh, signal a gravitational wave. And again, these are two, it's supposed to show two different black holes uh, orbiting and merging together. And also over here, which is a more, you could say, um, detailed picture, it shows the space time itself and it shows it rippling and then it shows the gravitational wave. Okay, I'm done. Thank you.